Hi everyone, Neuralnar here, and I'm here in my basement this time to give you an update on my 1000 amp hour battery bank. It is now far more than 1000 amp hours. Luckily, I was able to source more of these batteries. I had, oh, what was it, uh, seven, I believe, of these batteries plus two more Exide batteries in this bank. I was not entirely happy with having mismatched batteries. Uh, there's uh, technical reasons why having mismatched batteries in that case was not really a problem. I know some viewers argued with me, but uh, really parallel batteries is okay uh, if you just are aware of the limitations. In any case, I was not entirely comfortable with that. So I was able, luckily, to source six more of these very high quality batteries. Now the story behind the additional batteries that I purchased these are the original seven uh, plus one over here. This is the one that I tried to restore in my uh, desulfation video. This particular battery was successfully restored to 50% of its original capacity. And that means that this battery would start a car just as well as almost any automotive battery on the market, brand new. It would also have about 50 amp hours of capacity when running a deep cycle battery bank. It has a very low internal resistance, it accepts a charge extremely well. Basically it behaves like a battery half its size. And most people may call that successfully restored. I call it a failure because this is 50%. 50% is not good enough. This battery is bad. So I was not su successful in restoring this battery, but it was worth a try and it made a good video. <clears throat> and keep in mind when I got this battery, it was so dead it could hardly output uh, 10 milliamps even, so now it can output uh, hundreds of amps, and it does that just fine without problem. In any case, this is the 8th battery. It's not my battery bank because it is a bad battery, and I'm not going to use bad batteries. I was able, however, to get 6 more batteries of this type. These actually are brand new batteries. They are brand new. They just received their commissioning charge, and then they were shipped out to site, along with a piece of industrial equipment. Unfortunately, and rather tragically, the vehicle that was transporting these batteries, along with that industrial equipment, was involved in a vehicle accident. The equipment was totaled, and they scrapped the whole thing. These batteries were en route to be recycled when I intercepted them, and I took them here for my battery bank. There is some minor mechanical damage. This one has a dent in the top, which doesn't affect its uh, condition whatsoever. They're also caked in dirt and mud and everything else. Uh, I cleaned that off. That's not really a problem. This battery over here is the uh, sixth battery. They scrapped two of them because they broke open, but I got the ones that didn't break open. This one has a big dent in the side. You might be able to see it on camera down here. And having a dent in the side is not necessarily a good thing. I did test this battery, I cycled it fully. It seems to work perfectly. I can't tell whatsoever that there's a problem with it, but just because there is this dent in the side, I didn't want to put it in my battery bank. So I'm just going to use this separately as a deep cycle battery. In any case, it doesn't really matter because this is all that fits on this battery bank rack that I made. There are now 12 100 amp hour batteries on here. And 100 amp hours at a pretty good discharge rate. In reality, there's probably about 140 amp hours, or 1,400 amp hours or so, in this battery bank, according to lesser battery standards, but in any case, it is far more than 1,000 amp hours now. I still have this same inverter on this setup, but I did upgrade the cabling. I had two gauge cabling before, because that's just what I had available, but now I upgraded it to zero gauge cabling, which is adequate for this inverter. Technically, if you want to follow NEC regulations, I need to use 2 watt cabling, but this is adequate. So I have 12 batteries here. The first one half of the battery bank is all connected up with zero gauge cabling. From here, it transfers over to the other side and goes back the other way with 2 gauge cabling. Once I get through half the batteries, half the amperage is gone, so 2 gauge cabling is adequate for the rest. Now, it would have been a good idea to upgrade all of it, but I already had this cabling made, and I didn't want to throw it away. Cabling is quite expensive if you ever tried to make it yourself, so I just reused the cabling that I had. 
That way I didn't have any waste at all. And this setup worked pretty well. I did use it once during a power outage. It worked exceptionally well. No issues whatsoever. And it is on my cart with wheels so I can wheel it around my basement. And there is another note. In my previous videos I had this whole setup in my garage. And now it's in my basement. Yeah, I had to carry all this crap downstairs again. That was a real pain. And <laughs> just as a point of interest, just after I disassembled my battery bank and hauled everything downstairs, the power went out. So I had all of my batteries scattered around my floor, not connected up, inverter sitting over here on this old chair, not connected up, and the power went out. So yeah, that was awesome. Great. Uh, anyway, so I quick hooked, some, hooked a bunch of these batteries up with whatever cabling I could scrounge up and powered my house overnight. And it did work pretty well, but now I'm all ready once again. I also want to note, and hopefully I'll be able to make a video about this uh, when it gets warmer again, before I disassembled this battery bank and added the extra batteries, I did run this with my 12-volt uh, generator <clears throat> for a test run for 24 hours. I turned off my breakers and ran my house entirely off of backup power. And I think my 12-volt generator ran for a total of 5 hours, something like that. Uh, I ran the gas tank dry, and then I uh, refilled it and ran it some more. And it worked exceptionally well. The fuel consumption was right in line with what I estimated. It ran at full load for hours on end without any problem whatsoever. Nice and quiet, nice and smooth, and it worked really well. So I'm pretty happy with this setup. And luckily I was able to source a few more batteries, so now I have my battery bank full. Plus a spare. Plus a bad spare, which I don't know what I'll do with that, but I still have it at the moment. In any case, I just wanted to make a little update video for you to show you what I've done with my uh, 1000 amp hour battery bank since the last video that I released. Thank you for watching.